Hi hey guys, St. Vicious, and I'm going to be going over the patch 4.13 notes. Uh, it's an extremely long patch rundown, so sit tight, I guess. Like, they, they changed so much stuff this, uh, this time around. They ended up changing Elise. They made her cocoon width a little bit skinnier, so I guess they gave it, like, the Nidalee Spear treatment, where they just want it to be a little bit harder to hit. And I agree with this. Like, Elise cocoon is really, really easy to hit. Like, it'll hit sometimes, even when, like, it looks like it shouldn't have hit. It'll, like, clip them on the side or something, and it'll just snipe somebody out so um and then also they had a bug fix for cocoon was providing vision longer than stun duration uh i like seeing this a couple times but this doesn't really happen that much i feel like it's not something that like i feel like changes the game or anything like that in a extreme way um repel they changed the uh way it's calculated now there's a lot of times when you're trying to repel on somebody and it looks like they're in range but they aren't actually quite in range uh because of how it targets the um the uh the center of the their hitbox rather than the the edge of it so um i think it's just going to make it a little bit easier to like gauge where you can repel to on people so that's not really like a nerf or a buff or anything like that it's just like kind of like it's just going to help you like visually know how far you can reach on people uh so i think elise is still going to be a monster like these changes aren't aren't that big a deal like elise still has like amazing gap close still has an amazing cc it still has insane damage insane buff control like really good ganks she's just like an all-around great champion she's still going to be really good probably wouldn't be the top jungler on on, next, uh, on this new patch um evelyn they nerfed her q damage her uh they, yeah, they nerfed the Q damage, but then they did like this thing where they made the AP ratio scale up. So what this is going to do uh, is they're going to basically in the later levels, if you, if you decide to build for damage, you can build for damage and it'll just do more damage overall. But in the early levels, you're not going to do anywhere near the same damage. So what this means is their early jungle clears are going to be a lot slower and a lot weaker. And also her initial gank uh, damage is going to be a little bit weaker. Uh, I have to like play around with it more and see uh exactly how low she gets in the jungle now and like how much this affects her and also like her early game damage but if it's as low as i think it is it, it could like really hurt her um but i still think she'll be like an all right champion like she still has really good presence and her early game gank potential is really good like just being able to get on somebody with a red buff and hit them with like your e and a couple autos is really good on on, on eve and like she, she'll still probably be able to do her job um they have some minor nerfs to gragas so now his q is like worse at wave clearing and pushing it only does 70% uh, damage to minions, which is really good, because I think one of the problems with Gragas is not only can he harass you with his barrel, but he can just like instantly clear the wave with his Q and uh, a uh, body slam combo. So this is going to hurt that a little bit, uh, which I think is definitely needed. Like He just like just he just he wrecks minions in the top wave. Like He just instantly clears the wave, and it makes it really hard for a lot of other top laners, because they just get pushed in, and they can't really deal with the poke on top of that. Um, and now his W actually costs mana, which is really good because but what he was doing in the top lane, he's just using his W every time he's off cooldown to regenerate health. And then uh, he had a lot of Gragas like rushing Roa and health items and things like that. And even when Gragas rushed like Lich Bane or Death Cap and he didn't even have that much health, he was still able to sustain uh, really heavily just with like the minor health that like Doran's rings and things like that give. So it's really good that they did this change. Um, they also lowered the damage reduction and they made the cooldown uh, lower. So as far as like DPSing goes at late game, I'd say this is a buff, but in the lane phase, it's going to be a nerf because of the uh, the mana restraints. Uh, his body slam, uh, fixed the bug or body slam would occasionally fail to work when Gragas leveled it first or second. I've never seen this bug, but I don't really play too much Gragas. Um, I never heard of anybody like complaining about the bug either. So uh, it seems like it's a, like, a, a very rare thing. I think Gragas will still be like an amazing top laner, and he'll still be able to do his job, and he'll still have like really good matchups. So I don't think Gragas is going to be going anywhere. Uh, Hecarim, uh, they made his the way his passive scales up a little bit better. Um, it's better in the early game and better in the late game, which is just kind of like a weird tweak. Uh, and then they also like lowered the mana cost in this Q by like such a marginal number, like two at like half of the half of the ranks, like two and then four. It's like what? This is uh, this is not Hecarim's problem. Hecarim's problem is that his E has a 20 second cooldown at level one, and like, yeah, he just like doesn't. And it's like the way he clears the jungle is kind of awkward too. And I don't know. I think his E has like way too long of a cooldown. They need to lower the cooldown on his E. Like when they did the original nerf to his E, it just like crippled him way too much. But to be a good jungler now, you have to have like mobility and like, ways of escaping and uh, going in and out of the fight. And when your way of going in and out of the fight is a 20 second cooldown not gonna be so hot like maybe you'll see hecarim like he's played in lpl and chinese leagues a lot but 
I don't know. I'll have to see how he matches up against the junglers, because they are nerfing the core 3. Um, if the core 3 nerfs are that big, maybe you'll see Hecarim. Uh, just a bug fix on Jax. The Lee Sin nerf. Uh, so they raised his base health regen, and then they lowered the shield duration on the W. This actually doesn't really do too much for his clears, uh, his first clear, because your W usually wears off the moment like a, that a, a golem or anything like that. Like any big minion hits you because it's such a small shield. But uh, the later shield is going to be kind of like a little bit rougher. Um, and also like when you're doing... Uh, uh, like most people don't even like max W. They put a couple points in E first and then they'll max W out later. So I don't think this change is like that big of a deal. But uh, it might hurt like some top lane leasons that decide to get like an extra point in W or something like that. Um, it won't be too big of a change for the jungle. Uh, and then Cripple uh, no longer reduces his attack speed, which is going to be really big for Lee Sin's scrapping potential uh, when it comes to fighting other champions. And also on top of that, you won't be able to reduce the attack speed of uh, while you're clearing the jungle, which I think is actually uh, a pretty noticeable nerf. So Lee Sin will be lower while he's clearing the jungle, especially in his first two clears. Um, and his late game potential to sit on an AD carry... Uh, is also going to be weaker because a lot of leasons what they'll do is they'll like insect the AD carry in and then they'll Q to them and then they'll uh, uh, I mean they'll like yeah they'll kick the AD carry in and they'll just like Q to them or W to them and like sit on them with an E and like a random and Steve buff and just like their job is just to slow the attack speed of anybody uh, that can even use like attack speed like Kogma is like a really good example of like what you can do with that like he's non-mobile and you can just stick to him and slow his attack speed over and over again uh, so I think this is actually a pretty good nerf to Lee Sin. I think he'll still be viable, but uh, he's just not going to be as like blatantly overpowered as he is now. Because right now he like stands out so high above the other junglers. Uh, I would put actually Elise as stronger than Lee Sin now after this. Um, so she's probably the top dog right now. Uh, Olaf, the Undertow is now 7 second cooldown. Uh, big whoop, like that's not that big a deal. Maybe that's better for laning and... It's probably better for, like, I guess, jungle clear speeds because you'll be able to pick up your axes and catch them uh, for the refresh, like, even faster. Uh, the W, also you heal for more now uh, based on your missing health. Like, big whoop. I don't think that's that big a deal. And then they lowered the cooldown in Ragnarok. I don't think this, these are the changes that, that Olaf needs, but maybe you'll see him coming around a little bit. He's still, like, such a, a weird champion. Like, you have to snowball immensely with Olaf in order for him to be good. Um, and then like even still, uh, when you play off, like it's like you're in a, uh, you have like a timer on you, because eventually the AD carry is gonna reach a certain point where he does enough damage and has enough tankiness to where he can survive Olaf charging on him. So as soon as that happens, like Olaf becomes useless. So I don't really agree with Olaf's late game, and his early and mid game is okay, and his laning is okay, but it's just his like usefulness in team fights is like really really skewed and weird. But he is a good top laner. Like you can put him top of TP. And like Ghost or Flash or something like that. And he can put a lot of pressure on a lot of top lane matchups. Uh, maybe not some of the AP tops people are playing, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the champions he can bully out. Uh, they say they fixed the Shen uh, bug where you don't TP in. I don't believe it. Like they say they have fixed this bug like so many damn times. I think this is like, I wish I could like go back and find like the, uh, the amount of times they say they fixed this bug. But this is probably like the 8th or ninth time or something like that. So we'll see. We'll see if they fixed it. Maybe. Um, Shivana, they did like some bug tweaks with the, the burnout and the way they use it with Dragon's Descent. Uh, I don't really think this is that big of a deal. Um, yeah, it's it's like going to be pretty irrelevant. Like just the way that the damage updates is going to be matching burnout's damage rate. So I guess the way that the damage ticks is going to be like more better matched to uh, what the what the, the tooltip says. So like that's not even that big of a, of a change to Shivana. She's still going to be the same champion. All right, so Kale, they buffed the AP ratio by 0.5, which is not that big. I mean, that's what they did to, to Ari, and people are playing her now, so maybe this is the buff that Kale needs, beats me. And then they made it to where the intervention cooldown's a little bit lower um, at the initial ranks, so I don't know. These are, like, whatever changes to Kale. I still think she she'll probably be played, but not, like, that much. She's, like, really falling out of favor. I'm pretty sure they just did these buffs just because they were releasing the Riot Kale skin. I like guarantee that's why they did these buffs. Uh, they lowered the mana cost on Distortion from LeBlanc, uh, which is pretty good changes. Um, she's still kind of like falling out of favor because of that silence nerf, though. 
Uh, but she's still actually decently strong in lane. She just can't, like, match up that well against a lot of the popular champions that are going around right now, like uh, Syndra. Like, Syndra's, like, a really good example of who bullies out LeBlanc really hard right now. And even Yasuo is a pretty decent matchup against her, too. Um, and, of course, Zed is, like, the old counterpick to her. Maybe he'll, like, show up, who knows, randomly. Um, Lissandra, they... This is, like, a really weird change. They lowered the, the, high, uh, the max rank cooldown on the Q, and then they lowered the AP ratio on the W, and then they increased the slow at max rank on the R. Like, these are really weird changes to Lissandra. Um... I don't know. Her, her sustained DPS will probably be higher, but her burst DPS will be a little bit lower. I think Lissandra's actually not a bad top lane pick, and she's pretty good in some matchups, and she's really easy to gank off of as a jungler. So, maybe you'll see her pick some. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I know a couple top laners that like like to play her. <clears throat> Alright, so they have Lulu. Uh, Glitter, Lance, Slow, Decay is no longer scale with ability power. Thank God, because like a 500 AP... Lulu like slows your ass. It is the most brutal thing imaginable. You're like, well, I'm stunned. Like I can't move. Like fuck. And then she just gets like more and more glitter lances. Also, I think her sticking a power is gonna be a, a hurt a lot from this. Um, but I still think she'll be a really big lane bully. Uh, movement speed on the W got nerfed now, so now you can't just put one point into it and be like, nice, I'm set. Like I'm impossible to catch. Now you actually have to get a couple points in the W. Um, so late game Lulu will be the same as far as like the whimsy goes, but the early game and the fact of like it's really hard to catch in lane will be a little bit weaker as well. Uh, I think Lulu will still be a lane bully. She'll still be like a really great champion. She just provides so much utility. She's just still going to be really good. Uh, they gave uh, Lux's passive an AP ratio, um, and they nerfed like the base on it by a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, I think this is a good buff to Lux. It'll give her a little bit better wave clearing, and it'll also add a little bit to her late game damage potential. Um, is it the change she needs? Not really. She still gets bullied out by a lot of lane matchups, and she's like pretty easy to outplay. And also, since Mikhail's and things like that are so popular, like she's just not like top top tier. Like maybe you'll see. Like she's like a fun pick, I guess. Like maybe you'll see her a little bit, but I don't think she's gonna be like making any big comebacks. Uh, Velkaz, they made the missile width on the W a little bit wider, and then they made the range on the ultimate a little bit longer. I don't think these are the changes Velkaz needs, needs, but, uh, whatever. Like, he's, I think the problem with his, him is, like, the way his scaling goes is really rough. Um, he doesn't scale, like, properly, and then on top of that, he doesn't have any escape. So he's, like, really overshadowed by some of the champions that scale very well, like, uh, Zeref and Ziggs, who are, like, really good long-range pokers and who have just amazing ratios and like amazing forms of, of super long range cc like velikaz's cc is like pretty good the little bubble but i would give uh i would say xerath's is better because he just has better ap ratios on his abilities um yasuo uh so they made it to where the shield duration is a little bit shorter that's fine that makes him so like he's easier to poke out in lane Steel Tempest now scales less effectively with attack speed and has a minimum cast time of 0.13 seconds. Attack speed needed to reach this minimum is unchanged at 114% or 60% from items at level 18. Wait, if the attack speed needed to reach this minimum is unchanged, then that's like not that big of a deal. Um, I think this will just mean that like Bork is just more of an effective item on Yasuo. And like Bork and Shiv is like pretty much the traditional build that a lot of people are going. They're going like Shiv or into IE or Shiv into Bork. Um, so maybe this will just make the Bork uh, build a little bit more appealing. Um, fixed a bug where Steel Tempest Whirlwind was dealing instant damage in the area of normal Steel Tempest cast as was traveled out. This is a very minor change. I've like never witnessed that bug, but I'm sure it's like, fuck somebody before. Uh, Windwall no longer passively grants bonus flow from dashing. This is just to make it to where uh, if you're trading in a minion wave of Yasuo and he's like dashing all over the place, he can build up his shield really fast and get like some really effective trades on you. Um, so this is going to hurt that a lot. Uh, I think Yasuo will still be like a really annoying champion. He'll still be really broken if he gets fed. Uh, so I don't think he's going anywhere. Ziggs Mega Inferno Bond. They lowered or they raised the cooldown at max rank by 30 seconds. Thank God because like max CDR Ziggs can pretty much like clear a wave across the map like every two waves. Uh, it's just way too much wave clear and it's just way too much poke. Ziggs is just he's really annoying to deal with. Like it's so hard to siege into Ziggs. So this is just gonna hurt that a little bit. Uh, still think Ziggs will be a really amazing champion, but he's just not going to be as annoying. 
Fixed a bug where time bombs explosion ignored spell shields. I don't even know it did that, but a lot of people are playing Zillane again mid, and some people are playing a support, so... Okay. I guess this is like... Uh, yeah. Okay, I guess this is for like just Nocturne and things like that. Or Sivir. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Marksman. So we got Graves. Buckshot now will deal 5% more damage for each additional bullet hit, so that's going to be 15% damage amplification if you just like E into them and hit them with a really good Q. Which is actually a pretty decent buff. And then on the max rank of the ultimate, it does an extra 100 damage, which is a pretty good buff as well. Um, uh, I think Graves has like a small, weird niche spot in the world of AD carries, but he has really short range, so his like sieging is a little weird. But he's just like a really good bruiser overall. I think the problem with Graves is he's just like a little bit overshadowed by like Lucy and, and Corky and like some of the other short range AD carries that have like big burst abilities. Um, I think he's like decent though. Like he can maybe randomly find a spot uh, in the AD carry meta. Jinx now gets decided when she contributes to killing an inhibitor. Perfect. Just so you need Jinx buffs, <laughs> more penta kills. Uh, Kogma they lowered his base health to 487 and his health per level got increased. This is like a big change because whenever you like first play a game of Kogma and you get like a Doran's blade, you're like, damn, I have like almost 700 and something health like i feel like pretty damn tanky this this doesn't feel right at all his base health is like way too high it's so much higher than any other ad carry if you go into law wiki and, and look up each of the base health of each of the ad carries one of the reasons why kogma is so strong is because his base health is so damn high and then you just get triforce on top of that he's just above and beyond the tankiest ad carry and on top of that he does insane fucking damage so this is going to hurt his tankiness a little bit um, and then the Caustic Spittle now lowers armor and magic resist uh, uh, lower in the early ranks, and then it's the same at high rank, which is good because uh, the early armor and magic uh, pen is just like insane, especially in like that early dragon fight where like you have a Syndra on your team or something, you hit the guy with the Q, he's missing like half of his armor and magic resist and shit, he's like, oh god, and then Syndra just like rapes him, so that's just usually how that ends up. So, minor nerfs to Kog'Maw, I still think he'll, he's going to be an amazing champion. Uh, Relentless Pursuit no longer removes slows, thank god, because it is impossible to catch Lucian. And this will actually make champions like Eve and Nunu really, really, really good against Lucian. And then on top of that, they raised the cooldown on the E uh, to 18 seconds at max rank. Uh, so it's just a 4 second change overall. Uh, this will just make Lucian a lot easier to catch, um, and a, like a lot more counter ability so i think lucian's gonna fall down a pretty big peg on this uh sivir the initial movement speed uh got buffed by two hmm. for six seconds uh don't know if this is the change sivir needs to be viable like her damage is still kind of weird she has kind of weird range but Maybe she'll be played. I think she's just overshadowed by a lot of the AD carries. Um, and then a lot of the AD carries that are being played right now are just really good against her. Like, Kogma can poke her out. Like, Trist, like, just outscales her so hard. Like, Vayne got buffed this patch somewhere in here. I'm going to talk about that later. And that's a really good pick against Sivir, too. So, uh, Corky is also, like, a really powerful champion against her, too. So, I don't know. I don't see her being played. Uh, rocket jump nerf, the slow duration, uh, which is really good. Like 2.5 seconds slow at level one. If you jump on somebody, that is like way too long, man. If you like follow up, uh, and you are like, it just allows it's so easy for like anybody to follow up on that in the early levels. It makes like level two all ends like so brutal. So it's good they changed this. Then they also lowered the E damage by 30 at rank 1, which is a pretty damn big change. This is going to make Trist's early laning like pretty brutal, and you're going to have to start pairing things like Nami with Tristana just to get her out of lane phase, I think. Um, but she's still going to be the same like amazingly super strong late game Tristana that just kills everybody. So I don't think she's going to go anywhere. Um, Varus, they made the Chain of Corruption 20 second shorter cooldown to max rank. I think Varus has like this weird niche spot, um, and he, I think he can work out a lot of team comps. He actually beats almost every single AD carry uh, in laning phase. He has an amazingly strong laning phase, and it's really easy to set up plays off of him. He, him and Ash are the only two AD carries that can really have like a huge team set uh, fight set up, like ready to make the play, like set up the team fight for the team. Um, and the fact that his ult has such a short cooldown means uh, at 70 seconds you can just chuck the ultimate out and then wait a minute and guess what if they flash that ultimate or they use some type of a summoner or like long uh cooldown ability to get out of that you just wait a minute and then you make the play again and then it's just guaranteed kill so i think it's gonna be a really good late game for getting picks i think varus will start to like randomly show up in a lot of team comps 
Uh, attack speed per level um, on Bane has been raised to 4, uh, which is like, you know, multiply that by 18. Uh, so 0.9 multiplied by 18. And then it's just like an overall pretty good attack speed per level uh, boost. And as you know, Bane has like scales off attack speed on her W, and her ultimate also gives her insane AD ratios. So, um, yeah, she's just going to be, I think Bane's going to make a little bit of a comeback. They nerfed a lot of the other AD carries, and Bane, like, never really was, like, that terrible. She just had kind of, like, a weird late game, because she can't really siege too good, and, like, her scrapping ability is kind of weird. But, um, 70 AD late game is pretty fucking big. Uh, that's, that's like, yeah, you're getting a full BF sword item off of that, uh, just about. So I think that's really good. And then she has like attack speed too. So uh, you're gonna see those veins that just get like the 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 blade of the rune king and just go down the lane to like who oh, who wants to fight me one v one and they'll just split push all game and be annoying. Uh, so I think veins gonna definitely make a, t a comeback and be seen a lot in the competitive scene. Um, <clears throat> see Sona. They did like this uh, gameplay update models visuals snuggle zones. <laughs> Clarity, show me removes enemies now dance 50% faster while stun with crescendo. Uh, full gameplay update page. I'm not gonna go into the Sona changes because I haven't played with it yet. Um, I'll like probably talk about her again later. Uh, but I think Sona, as she is right now, has like a really simplistic kit. It makes her like really hard to balance because she has like such a low skill cap. Um, so I hope that they move more towards like a higher skill cap so that she's easier to tune balance. Um, but I think she'll be fine. Uh, Braum. I'm really glad they nerfed Braum, but I feel like... I want to say that they over-nerfed Braum. Uh, they lowered the damage on the passive, and they made the mana cost on W even higher. And then the ultimate just got, like, railed with nerfs. Uh, the first target knockout duration is now 1, 1 1.25, 1 1.5, so it makes it really hard to set up plays in, like, the early game with it. Like, a one-second knockup is, like, not that long. Like, it's still going to be good, but it's not that... not, like, crazy good. And uh, the slow linger duration, when an enemy leaves Glacial Fissure Field of Ice, will continue to be slowed for 1.5 seconds, and now it's 0.25. So, like, I agree that the slow on Brahms Ultimate was, like, way too brutal, but I, th I think they should have lowered that to, like, 0.75 or something, or, like, maybe one second. It still is, like, an ultimate, and he still, like, has a weak laning phase, so, against a lot of champions like Thresh. Um, uh, I don't know. I feel like they over nerf Braum on this. Um, maybe they'll like buff the numbers back, but I still think he'll be a good champion. But he's not going to be seen as much as he is now, like where he's like first pick in band worthy. Um, Janna, they made Tailwind the range bigger, good. Like 800 range is really small. Um, Howling Gale, uh, basically you can make the knock up 0.25 seconds longer if you leave it channeling the whole duration, which almost never happens. So these are just like. These Janna buffs are like, who gives a shit? Like, Janna's just such a bad champion. Uh, Nami, um, these are random Nami nerfs. Uh, five movement speed, and then the the cooldown got raised to 10 seconds at all ranks in the W. Like, I didn't really think Nami was, like, super broken. She was, like, a very skilly champ, and she required a high skill cap to play. Um, is she still going to be played? Yeah, like, these are not that bad of nerfs. She's st still going to be, like, a top-tier amazing champion. But these are just, like, just weird little nerfs. I don't know, kind of, like, annoying. Uh, Thresh, Dark Package, uh, that Dark Passage, uh, no group pairs. Now only Shields is the first ally to be near the Lantern. Thresh himself can still always receive the shield. So, uh, Thresh, like, W in team fights and for tanking things like Baron and Dragon late game where you just trade tanking and you have this big shield is, like, way too strong. So I'm glad they nerfed this. Uh, I thought, and I don't think people are going to max W second on Thresh anymore. They'll probably max the E. Um... Flay, fix the tool tip. The bug now lists Flay slow duration is 1.5 seconds. It's actually one second. No actual change. So, okay, that's like just a bug fix on the tool tip. Uh, this is a pretty large nerf on the ultimate. The box no longer deals additional damage to opponents when they break extra walls beyond the first. Extra walls still apply half slow duration. Uh, box does a lot of fucking damage, especially if you can get them in it where you like flay it and they have to go through the box twice. Uh, I don't know. This is a pretty big damage nerf on Thresh, but I still think. Just because of his playmaking potential, like Thresh is still going to be one of the top uh, support champions. He's still just an amazing champion. I'm surprised they didn't touch Morgana in this whole like bug fix here. Um, or not bug fix, but nerf and buff uh, frenzy they did. Uh, so I think Morgana is going to be like showing up as like a very strong support pick. Uh, just because she didn't see any buffs or nerfs outside of item changes. Uh, greater Stealth Totem, cooldown now, 90 seconds. Who gives a shit? <laughs> 
Most people upgrade to sweepers anyway, so that's not really relevant. Frostfang, this is a really good change because one thing I hate in the game is being able to generate gold without doing anything. By buying this item and just sitting there jerking off, and you have 4 GP10, like 4 GP10 is a lot of fucking gold. Like, I, I don't really feel like doing the math and all that shit, like what you get over like 30 minute game and all that kind of stuff, but it's it's a lot of gold generating. On top of like you're generating the gold from hitting them and like proccing the frost thing passive, you're just generating way too much gold and it's overshadowing all the other items. And then what in turn this happens is by doing almost nothing, you can build almost the same items as a mid laner if you're going off as a, as a support bottom, which is like, you're not even a support then, then you're a carry. And that kind of like moves away from the direction of what a support should be. Like you should be thinking, oh, I don't want to build a death cap. I need to build like this Mikhail's and stuff to help my AD carry. Like I need to help my team, build items to help them out. Rather than like, let me do all the work. Like, let me carry this damn game. Like, you shouldn't be playing support if like that's your mindset. Um, Nomad's Medallion now has 10 movement speed, and the mana regen has been lowered to 5 mana. I actually like this change a lot because I like to get Nomad's Medallion on Alistar, um, because it allows me to like gap close and like get up in the team fight, and has also it's good CDR. Uh, so I like the movement speed increase on it, and I guess with the movement speed comes like a price. Uh, it goes 20 movement speed at when you upgrade the talisman, but then the CDR is like 10%, which is actually a pretty, I don't want to say a pretty big nerf to the item. It's like a buff nerf. Um, it's still going to be a great item. Like You can get the CDR cap pretty easily as a sport, because I guess you get talisman, and then you'd probably have like maybe Mikhail's in there, or like a locket, and then you just like get a frozen heart. Like That'd probably be my Alistar build, and you'd hit, you'd hit the CDR cap pretty easily. Uh, and you could probably get like runes of masteries if you wanted to do that too. And it just has higher health regen on top of that. Still think talisman's gonna be a really great item. And because also the frost thing got nerfed, it's just a good item overall. DFG got nerfed to 30 second cooldown, which is kind of weird. Like a 90 second cooldown. I, I never really thought that DFG was like a big problem recently. Like it's strong on Syndra, strong on RA champions like that, but uh, and Fizz, but like. This is such a weird nerf. Like, it's so random. It's like, damn, there's too many people using DFG nowadays. It's like, no. Kind of weird nerf. And they did this weird change of Rylai's where it now gives 100 AP and then it has 400 health. So they took 100 health off it and gave it 20 AP. Kind of irrelevant changes. Not really going to change the item too much. Um, Banshee's Veil now duh, has a recharge time to 40 seconds. Uh, Banshee's Veil is just too good of a magic to this item. And it just overshadowed the other items. So, pretty good nerf to this item. Um, people might actually think about getting Spirit Visage again, and then Locket's just going to be more prevalent of an item. <clears throat> uh, Chalice of Harmony, lower the magic resist. This is just to make Assassins, AB Assassins, more prevalent. Um, Syndra will probably be showing up more, Ari, champions like that. That can really take advantage of people having low magic resist. Uh, Sword of the Cult, nobody builds this item outside of LCS matches. Big whoop, don't care about the item. And now you can see how many Feral Player stacks you have without... Uh, actually having the Feral player are the Riggles, so good quality of life change to this item. Don't play Twisted Tree Lion, so not going to comment. Don't play Crystal Scar. Uh, exhaust. Now it only does 40% damage reduction instead of 50, but now shreds 10 of the target's armor and magic resist. I like this change because now it makes Exhaust a more offensive ability. Um, in the bot lane, you can like, like nice, I like lower the armor and magic resist by 10, so now we can just do more damage to them. Because people usually don't fight you when they have Exhaust on anyways. Um, and I feel like Exhaust is overshadowed by Ignite in a lot of situations, so, uh, yep, Exhaust is just going to be, like, probably the go-to spell in a lot of situations. Uh, Heal now has a lower heal rank at max rank. Um, yeah. Heal just shows up way too much. It's, like, too good of a, of a spell. People might start taking Barrier and then, like, maybe taking Heal in the support or something like that. Uh, or maybe they'll just go back to taking Barrier on the AD, because, like, 100... It's like over 100 uh, damage change. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to see how AD carries feel about that. I'll have to talk to them. But this is actually a pretty big change. Like You might see Barrier coming around a lot more. Uh, team builder changes, match history changes, new player features, match loading speeds. Oh, yay, we load faster. Whoopee. Uh, bug fixes. It's all just like weird bug fixes and uh, upcoming skin changes. And that's it for the patch changes. I actually thought these were bigger. Like, there was a lot of changes that were slated to go in on this patch. Um, but they didn't actually come around. Uh, but yeah, I think the big thing to take away from all this is like maybe some more junglers are going to be showing up since they nerfed some of the core junglers. Uh, but yeah.
And then there's going to be just like new ADs popping up. But thanks for watching, guys. That's it for my patch rundown.